interview with Shay Peters. So Shay, what is one of the most riveting travel experiences you've ever had? Okay, I'm gonna tell you about two, Okay, but I'll start with one. Mm -hmm. Um, my honeymoon, I went to an island called Turtle Island in Fiji. Okay. And the cool part about this island is, well, first of all, you have to travel to, from New York, we went to LA. Right, okay. Which was five hours. Five hours. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you the bad part. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all the negative stuff first. Mm. You travel to LA, and then from LA to Fiji, it's 11 hours. Wow. Mm. So it's 17 Fiji. hours flat mm -hmm. traveling, but you know, then you have to take in time at the airport, airport. et cetera, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. Then once you get to Nadi, which is the airport in Fiji, Fiji. Mm -hmm. you have to wait for a seaplane. Okay. So the seaplane, we arrived at 5.45 in the morning. Wow. The first seaplane's not until 9.30. Okay. So you have to uh, wait. Another four hours. Another yeah, four yeah, yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. So the seaplane takes you about 30 minutes, and it was, I thought it was going to be way scarier than mm -hmm. it is. Do not be afraid of seaplanes. They're actually better than real planes. <laughs> <laughs> like to me, to me. But um, you land in the water because it's a right. seaplane, mm -hmm. and they come out. This is Turtle Island. They come out, and they actually lift you out of the water and carry you and there's like a band there clapping they put you know flowers on you greet you with a drink which mm -hmm. is great after 24 hours oh, you're yes. like hey i have yeah, a, you know a cocktail, a cocktail or in some Something. snacks yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this island only allows 28 people so 14 couples wow. so it's a very private very quiet we're actually <laughs> playing J. Cole <laughs> really loud in our burr, what's mm -hmm. called a burr, it's a cottage. They thought we were arguing. <laughs> so we were like, wow. no, we're rapping. <laughs> <laughs> we're just rapping. They came by, it's like, everything okay? I'm like, we're just playing J. Cole right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like, we were hyped up. We're just doing Brooklyn. <laughs> we're being very Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Fiji. And Fiji. <laughs> we're like, you sure? Yeah. Like, yeah, we're okay. It was embarrassing, but you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could hear our music throughout the island. <laughs> Okay. But um, riveting because it was just fun to be there with my new husband. It was fun to see people from, you know, all walks of life. People mm -hmm. who had, I mean, this place was like 4,000 a night. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. you see people from, a couple from Pittsburgh who saved and saved and saved, you know. Mm -hmm. And they're like, this is it. This is it for us. Right. And you were there with a couple who was like, oh, yeah own a house in Cabo and we own a house in, right, you know, right. so even like places like that, you see people of all walks That's of life, life, you know, mm -hmm. and that was fun. And we uh, took sunset cruises and ate fish and sea grapes and mm -hmm. just things that I would never, you know, they were hunting octopus <laughs> like in right. the, going down into the den. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. So that was interesting. And then, so that was more of a romantic okay. um, getaway for me. Mm -hmm. um, but the most historically just inspiring and spiritually uplifting was Peru. Okay. Um, it was at Machu Picchu? It was Ma I did Machu end up in Machu, Machu Picchu, Picchu, but they mm -hmm. flew us to Lima first. Okay. So, you know, you get the whole Lima like is such city, a cool city. city. Yeah. Um, I heard that. It's, I've never, yeah. I, I hadn't heard much about it. Right. It's literally like a, I don't, I hate to, oh, New York, right, you know, right, that's, right. that's so overrated, but it's like this financial city, but also it has like a lot of artwork, mm -hmm. but the food scene, mm -hmm. Peru is known for ceviche. Right. And that's what you go there for. Right. And when I tell you, it's just these river prawns and, you know, we call them crawfish. Right. They call them river, river prawns. prawns. Okay. Um, just things to eat that, the Pisco Sour is like the drink right. of their country. Mm -hmm. Just good cosmopolitan area that you have to fly into anyway. Right. So you might as well stay a night or two there. Right. Okay. Then from Lima, we went to Cusco. Okay. And Cusco, the thing about Peru that's, if you have altitude issues, you don't have a they're going to they're gonna be yeah. exaggerated right. there. So they chew a lot of coca leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which are leaves from the coca, coca tree. tree. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I, so I've heard. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I've heard. And um, that helps you with the altitude. Okay. So you're constantly Chew. chewing. <laughs> constantly. On the coca leaf. On co no, it's nonstop. Like even at the hotels when you arrive, you know, they might offer no cocktail. 
here, take just baskets and baskets of coca leaves to get you acclimated. So, oh, you, so, oh, okay, so once you're there for a while, you don't need that anymore, or what? Is it, I mean, how is that? Oh, is I live in New problem? York, yeah. so we're a little below Low sea, sea level. level. Yeah, no, they're like. So at Cusco, at mm -hmm. Cusco, it's nine, no, they're, they're 11,000 feet above sea level. Okay. Right. So it's dramatic. And the reason we did that is because what you mentioned, Machu Picchu, is below. No. So they take you all oh, the way. Right. If you have a guide or a proper right. guide, mm -hmm. they'll take you from Lima all the way up okay. to the highest point, which is Cusco. And Cusco is where you'll see a lot of ruins, mm -hmm. great food, great markets. That's where, like, the mountain -y people live. You know, mm -hmm. there's alpacas everywhere, llamas everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. just beautiful scenery. Um, a lot of uh, the salt flats okay. are in Cusco, and also a lot of, um, what are they called? The, gosh, I forgot the name of them. When the, the Aztecs had, <laughs> the, 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 I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, mm -hmm. it's a lot of ruins, a lot okay. of things that you need to see there. And then Machu Picchu is below that. Okay. Now, the thing about Peru, like, it's not a budget trip. Right. It's not, it's not, hey, let's go there, I got a little, you know, mm -hmm. no. no. You, you need, need money, money because you have to take tiny planes everywhere. everywhere. Okay. You know, it's like Costa Rica is very similar. Like people assume like, oh, I got a Costa Rican vacation. There's no roads there. Right, right. So you got to continuously fly. fly yep. So Peru, it's like that. So you got to fly down to Machu Picchu and that's at 9,000 feet. Mm -hmm. So if you've stayed a few nights at 11,000 feet, mm -hmm. you feel a little bit better. Okay. But it's to me. It was a lot. It was hard, you know, okay. dealing with the altitude. Now, did you do this as a writing ex expedition? Yes, I, mean, I did. Okay. I wrote about it for a magazine called or a website called Just Lux, and I did it for Bridal Guide also. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so Machu Picchu, mm -hmm. it's everything you think it is, but more. Okay, it's all those pictures you've seen mm -hmm. in Nat Geo, and you know, growing up. It's all of that. Right now, what I would suggest another secret tip. Go now. Okay. They're right gonna, now. They're going to close it. Really? Yes. They're closing Machu Picchu to tourists. It is, no, a lot of people don't know. Uh -huh. So when I was there, they were like, this is going to be the last couple of years. They're building a tram uh, to go. I mean, a yeah. tram to go over because what they said is happening is Machu Picchu is sinking due to so many tourists. tourists. I mean, they have millions of tourists a year and mm -hmm. on what is summer solstice like june yep, 21st right. or something yep, june 23rd around that time Some, mm -hmm. that's their biggest day because the sun comes through the sun gate it's supposed to be like a blessing from the sun god etc cetera, etc cetera. so i that's would sure. go if right. you want to go to machu picchu go now because you don't want to be the person who's like yeah we took a tram right <laughs> over Machu, Machu Picchu, Picchu, you know, and, <laughs> right like that's not the same. I mean, you get in those 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 old stones and you see the water. Actually, don't drink the water either. Right. <laughs> don't drink the water mm -hmm. because there are people who go to Machu Picchu and drink the water, and then one that's of the it. people on my trip did that, and yeah, it was all bad right. after that. But mm -hmm. you know, ancient water is right. not. <laughs> it's not good water. All right, I hear you. I hear you. So you, so as a freelance writer, you, how do you want people to connect? What do you, what do you do to connect people to your, to your experiences or to your writing? Well, how do you I want hope. To connect? I hope. Just as I hope here, mm -hmm. you can see the authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna be like, hey guys. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna do a yoga pose on the beach for. Mm -hmm. Instagram, you know, right. but I am going to tell you where to get a good piece of red snapper when mm -hmm. you're in Turks and Caicos, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. Because what else do you go to the islands for? Mm -hmm. I am going to tell you, yeah, you need to go to the Louvre when you're in Paris, but you also need to go to the art district and hang right. out and see Tupac right. graffitied with Mickey Mouse on the walls, you know, mm -hmm. and, and be in Paris at listening to Biggie at 12 at night, right, you know? Right, right. Um, so I hope that those little nuances and experiences that I have that I'm able to communicate through my writing. You know, mm -hmm. you only have so many words you can write. You know, right. sometimes I'm 500, sometimes I'm a thousand words. Mm -hmm. That's a little hard to get Peru, you yeah, know, a into a thousand words. Right, you right, know? right, right. But I hope that people are able to connect with little things like that. And I have had people contact me like, hey, you know, your 10 things to do in Charleston, West Virginia, mm -hmm. you forgot. Right. <laughs> You're like, well, that's what you did. Right. So you can create your own right. list. So, you know, I have had people be like, you forgot this, that, right. and the other. And, you know, so 
I like that too okay. because it means that people are actually reading, reading what and you're not writing, yeah. and not just making nasty comments like you know you know your hair was ugly in that picture right, or right, whatever right, right. you know. Well, speaking of Instagram and speaking of social media, you do some really nice. You've got some really nice shots. Yeah. Who's your camera person when you go on trips? Do you have a camera person? No, Is I'm the you? camera. It's you me. are the you. Okay. I take all my pictures. pictures. Um, okay. If it's if I'm in the picture without my arm showing, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe it's a tourist Tumbers, yeah. or somebody who I'm traveling with, right. um, because I do travel with other journalists a lot, okay. you know, um, which is fun too. Yeah. And yeah, I take out my own photos okay. and I use my camera phone. I don't you don't have like a Canon, Canon yeah. you know, XL twenty five hundred, you right. know, right, 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 no, right, because right. that too, I'm like I feel like camera phones moment. are so advanced, yeah, that that little nuance, those two little megapixels that you're missing between a big camera, that is, that's not fun to carry on a trip, trip yeah. to Malta, you right, know, like, right. I'm not, I'd rather just have my cell phone and keep it moving. Keep it moving, yeah. right. When you, how do you, how does the stories come about? I mean, I, I mean, locations and stuff like that come about. Well, locations, I get offered a lot of, like, PR people will reach out to me and they'll say, hey, would you like to go to... Panama mm -hmm. and I'm you know because I tend to write luxury honeymoon bridal travel I can't stay in the you know Holiday Inn Express right when I get there yeah I mean thank God yeah. <laughs> so so they reach out to me and I ask them like what are the things that you know you're trying to highlight in your country or city or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we go from there. Okay, so yeah. where do, us, where do speaking of that, where do the assignments come from? Is it from the tourism boards? Is it from the magazines themselves and saying, hey, we want a spotlight, you know, this no. year we're doing, how does that? Well, yeah. for me, what I've been lucky with is with editors, they trust me. Okay. Um, sometimes I will have to pitch because I am freelance. Okay. But the editors that I work with the most they trust me. They're like, okay, mm -hmm. you want to go to Peru? Do it. Go, you know okay. what I'm saying? You're going to Malta? Figure it out. Okay. You know, so I'll work with either a tourism board, a PR agency, or, you know, uh, yeah, usually those two to mm -hmm. just get, like, where are we going? How are we getting there? Because you have to trust, too, that these people are going to take care of you. Right. Because I've been in situations with tourism boards, and they're they're pretty terrible like okay. they can be they, they can, can be mm -hmm. um i'll give you an example i was on an international journalist tour so i was the only american journalist okay to arizona okay. they were bringing international tourists mm -hmm. they put me in a hojo okay in phoenix <laughs> in phoenix i love it <laughs> like in phoenix of all cities i was like right, right. wait a minute but you didn't how are we in a hojo? Right. Like, if there's, there's, there's Sheratons. Right. They were like, well, you know, you're on a trip with people from Brazil and India and, and, and China, and they don't care about luxury. Mm. <laughs> they don't? <laughs> so if I go to China, they're going right. to put me in a hojo? Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. No, right, Just right. say, you know, you're being cheap. Right. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I literally stayed in a hojo, uh, and they were like, feel free to have dinner at Denny's. Okay. And I was like, oh. <laughs> This is big time. I had a whole like that Bad was Bad experience. Yeah, that was So how many trips do you take a year like that? I mean, when you think the right. Wow. Um And are most of your trips now for writing and not personal? Oh, all my trips are so for, for writing, writing. now. Okay. I, I right. don't have any personal time. I right. mean, but that's the good part about it. It feels personal. It feels like when you get to some places you're like, wow, I would have never Been, gone. To, like yeah. Malta was mm -hmm. one of my favorite places to go. Okay. would have never thought, yeah, Malta, a little country mm -hmm. somewhere between Africa Africa's and, and, and Europe. Right. All right. Absolutely gorgeous. Amazing. Blue water. You get there, it is literally a movie set. Mm -hmm. It's literally a movie set. Like, And when you get there, you're like, oh, this is where Gladiator was filmed. Right. This is where Game of Thrones is filmed. Yeah, right. And it's... it's Literally yeah. walking, you're like, oh my god, that's where you know, uh, right. the, the lion came out on Gladiator. Right, it's right, beautiful. Right. What's your next uh, writing assignment? I think I'm going to Panama next. Okay. Um, you must go to the Pearl Islands. 
when you're there. Really? Yeah. Okay. Contrador so Island. Contrador Island is where you have to fly in on a seaplane. Oh, okay. Or My fly favorite. in a regular plane. You know, you can fly in, but they have all these private islands. It's probably a thousand islands in outside of Panama because there's nothing in Panama. Right. The city I've itself. Never, I've, not Panama uh, City. city yeah, yeah but, but I mean, Panama City, going to Panama, it is totally like... Just yeah, a it's Because where the canal meets, mm -hmm. you're meeting the... It's kind of like the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian... Right. I mean, the Pacific Ocean. Right. They're coming in, so it's almost like right. a drudge yeah. in the city itself. Right. So it's not beautiful. There's no beaches, anything. You have yeah. to go to the Pearl Islands. Right. So you hop, jet, go to the Pearl Islands. I had a best experience. We were on where they shot... Um, not Survivor. Yeah, one of the Survivor. Uh, amazing uh, Race? Ama amazing Race. Right, Thank right, you. Right, right, right. Yeah, they did Amazing Race there, and we were on the island. It was a private island, white wow. sand and beaches. Gorgeous, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't really gorgeous. know much about Panama. Yeah. So, I'm, so, what have you learned the most about yourself through all the global traveling and your travel experiences? How to be more tolerant. Okay. Um, to learn how, I've learned how to breathe a little better you know mm -hmm. originally being from Tennessee but being in New York a right. million years now it's like why aren't you walking faster why are you you know right. and and again as you get older you're like okay I can understand why you know you know where that patience comes from mm -hmm. you know crying babies on the airplane don't bother me because I know I'm going someplace beautiful and I have noise canceling headphones right. so get that that's right. another must yeah. have like <laughs> if you if you hate babies and right. restaurants and planes just get some some headphones oh. and keep it moving like yeah. don't just sit there being grouchy you right. know mm -hmm. ruining your own vacation yeah, sure. right no it's true <laughs> um so I've learned that you know I've learned smells mm -hmm. <laughs> you know can, I mean, just being more tolerant being more open to other people's experiences. And I've also found that when we do travel internationally, because I do a lot of domestic travel too. Okay. I, I, I love traveling the States. I've been to 44 States. Okay. I love traveling the States. But I find that when you travel outside of your comfort zone, that you're like, wow, these people are just like me. Right. Different, but just like me. Like mm -hmm. people want the same things everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. People want, you know, food, clothing, shelter. They want to have a healthy body. Mm -hmm. They want their family to be in good financial shape. Mm -hmm. If they don't look like you, if they don't sound like you, if they don't dress like you, they probably still want the same things. Right. You know, they right. still want to have a good glass of wine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They still want to watch a movie. You know, they want to have the same thing. So religion and color and all that, you know, yeah, they matter. Right. And you have to respect other people's places. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, once you have like get in a bar somewhere yeah. in Scotland, you realize it's it's dudes are ju just like they just want to talk about, you know, why would you order a bourbon and not a scotch? Right. How right. dare you come here, right. you know what I'm saying? Right. 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 To right. our country and order, you know, Jack Daniels. Yeah. You better get on this <laughs> right. scotch, you know. Right. Next thing you're having an argument with the whole bar about Tennessee whiskey right. versus Scotch. Gotcha. <laughs> and, 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 you know, just being open. You know, mm -hmm. people get so, oh my gosh, it's scary here. Right, right, Is Jamaica right. safe? Right. We live in Brooklyn. Right, 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 right. right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you can happen right here on the streets of Flatbush. You know, I got robbed in Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee. Right, you know, right, so right. <laughs> it's like, you know, the misconceptions that you have a lot of place about places, that's what, you know, traveling has taught me, you know, just breathe, be tolerant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might be an old lady that you might run over in New York. Mm -hmm. She's, you know. She's somebody's she, mother. Yeah, she's somebody's <laughs> mother, yeah. you know. So what? So final question, how do you love the way you live? Gosh, I just told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything. <laughs> no, um, I love the way I live because I think that I've learned how to be I think that traveling has just made me a better person. Mm -hmm. I hope it has, okay. you know? Um, yeah, I still get Does your husband think that? Um, we would have to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I bring him back a lot of stuff. Okay, so, good. He, you know, he's happy about that. You know, I love the way I live because traveling, I always bring back some spice or a liquor from mm -hmm. another country, just a flavor. Yeah. Because when I still have salt in my kitchen from Peru, okay. you know, I still have like jam from Malta. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that experience of bringing it into my kitchen, right. you know, into my home since 
that remind me of that good time that I had. So that's something I love. All right. Well, I want to thank our guest, Shay Peters, today for coming in. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Y'all can learn everything about Shay on my website at lovethewayyoulivenyc.com. And until next time, celebrate life and continue to love the way you live.